In The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, during the cutscene of memory number 6, the Gerudo Assault, we got our first look at the diabolical plans of Ganondorf as he launched an attack on the Great Plateau in the ancient past of Hyrule. We also got our first glimpse of these two NPCs flanking his position, who appear to be Gerudo identical twins. After their failure at the plateau, in the next cutscene, memory number 7, a show of fealty, before the court of Hyrule, this same trio of Gerudo kneels to the king of Hyrule, a facade of loyalty masking more insidious intentions. If we zoom in on the sashes on the shoulders of the twins, their identities are revealed. One reads Koume, and the other reads Kotake in an ancient language. These names also appear on the blade of Ganondorf's Gloom Sword, same as they do on his katanas in the Wind Waker. So it would appear these two NPCs are a version of the twin sister witches Koume and Kotake we first met in Ocarina of Time who combined to form twin Rova in the Spirit Temple in their attempt to thwart Link from saving Hyrule. These quote, surrogate mothers of Ganondorf guide his hand from the shadows and perform sinister magic to further his demonic plans. The Tears of the Kingdom NPCs also have red and blue gems on the foreheads of their masks, a callback to the fire and ice attack powers of Koume and Kotake, respectively. Over the years, Twin Rova has become an iconic fan favorite amongst the Zelda community, so people were excited to see them make this obscure appearance in the most recent Zelda game, no matter how brief. But a little known fact about Koume and Kotake is that they are not totally original creations from the world of Zelda. In fact, they are loose adaptations of characters from a 1949 Japanese mystery novel titled The Village of Eight Graves, written by Saishi Yokomizo. When I first learned about this connection, I wanted to know more. Do the characters simply share names across mediums, or does the inspiration run deeper than that? So I decided to read the book to see for myself. I also ended up watching a 1977 movie adaptation of it titled The Village of Eight Gravestones, directed by the prolific Yoshitaro Nomura. This video is not meant to be a review of the book or the subsequent movie, but I will say I really enjoyed both, especially the novel. I would highly recommend reading it if you enjoy murder mysteries. In The Village of Eight Graves, twin sisters Koume and Kotake are the matriarchs of the wealthy Tajimi family in an ancient village located in the Japanese countryside. They are depicted as so old and frail that their presence in the story could be considered unnatural, as if some sinister magic is propping them up. The village is named Eight Graves after the resting place of some exiled samurai warriors who were betrayed and murdered by the villagers for their gold. The protagonist of the story, Tatsuya, who is orphaned at a very young age with little knowledge of his origins, is summoned from his big city life to the village by the Tajimi family, where it is revealed that, unbeknownst to him, he is the heir to the Tajimi family fortune. Very soon after he arrives at the village, people start to die. They are being murdered with poison. As panic sweeps across the village, Tatsuya is implicated. Wherever he goes, death follows. One night, his aunts Koome and Kotake give him some tea which turns out to be spiked with a sleeping agent. This event leads to him discovering that the annex he sleeps in is the entrance to an underground cave system that connects to the various parts of the village. Tatsuya and his love interest Noriko explore the caves, and to their dismay they discover a corpse. The embalmed corpse is dressed in a suit of armor of samurai origin. The armor of one of the very same samurai who were murdered and which the village is named after. Eventually he learns the full truth. His aunts had drugged him so they themselves could enter the cave in secret and pray to the corpse in armor. We learn that the corpse is Yozo Tajimi, an evil man who murdered 32 villagers in life. The way the mystery unfolds, we start to believe that this man, despite being dead for over 25 years, is somehow responsible for the murders in the current day. There is even a scene in the book where the armored corpse is believed to come to life before committing one of the murders. Given the unnatural aura of the twins, 
the bizarre act of praying to his corpse, and the fact that they are connected to poison implicates the twins as well, suggesting perhaps they are facilitating the return of Yozo. If we zoom in here, I believe this is the first connection between Eight Graves and Zelda beyond the names of the twins. The tableau of white-haired twin sisters performing magic on a corpse in a suit of armor for nefarious reasons is reminiscent of Twin Rova animating a suit of armor inhabited by Naboru in Ocarina of Time. My point is not to suggest that this is a one-to-one -one comparison, because although Naboru is cursed, she obviously is not dead and her suit of armor is not that of a samurai, but I am suggesting it's a thematic one, the theme of decrepit evil twins bewitching a suit of armor to commit atrocities. Just as Zelda games draw on other ubiquitous tropes like mummies coming out of coffins, yetis inhabiting snowy tundra, or even mermaids, all of these tropes were borrowed from other famous myths despite few of the details lining up exactly between the Zelda games which referenced them and their source materials. We still instantly recognize them because they are so iconic. When we see Gibdos roaming around tombs in Tears of the Kingdom or Ocarina of Time, we instantly understand it's a reference to horror stories of mummies coming back from the dead, yet the games don't need to recount their ancient Egyptian origins in order for us to do this. The same goes for Yeto and the myths about yetis in the Himalayas, and mermaid myths have been around since ancient times, yet Link's Awakening doesn't need to ground itself in any of that in order for us to instantly recognize one of them. You could even point to the many depictions of witches brewing potions across the Zelda series as an example of this, including the versions of Kohume and Kotake we see in Majora's Mask. So considering that this book is extremely popular in Japan, or at least it used to be, it isn't hard to imagine that it would influence other stories originating from Japan. I couldn't find any concrete sales figures, but the book does appear on multiple lists of famous Japanese novels. And one thing that is certain is that it was popular when Zelda creator Shigeru Miyamoto and producer Eiji Aonuma were young men, so it isn't far-fetched to assume it influenced their storytelling. Also consider that Ocarina of Time is not the only time this happens. In The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons, General Onyx, a demon in a suit of armor, is literally stated as being summoned from the Dark World by Twin Rova. But the connections may not stop there. In the story of the Village of Eight Graves, if Koume and Kotaki are twin Rova, then Yozo Tajimi is certainly Ganondorf, and his clan, the Tajimi, are the Gerudo. Any crime against humanity you can imagine, Yozo is guilty of. Trigger warning if you decide to watch the film version, it depicts his reign of terror in graphic detail during which he even mounts two flashlights to his head to appear as a horned demon. But beyond being an evil man, many of his character traits are also eerily similar to the king of the Gerudo. For starters, Yozo was orphaned when he was very young, so Koume and Kotake, who were never married and had no children of their own, raised him as their own son. And we know that Twin Rova raised Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time, the English version of the game states that the witches are surrogate mothers of Ganondorf, suggesting that one of them gave birth to the king. But the original Japanese text tells a much different story. Instead of the word surrogate, it actually tells us that they are his foster parents, translation provided by Lorulian Historian. But Koume and Kotake didn't just foster Yozo, they adored him despite his cruel nature. Everything they do in this story appears to be dedicated to upholding Yozo's legacy even long after his death. A passage from the book that explains this adoration stood out to me. It reads as follows, quote, If they had clothed him in armor and placed him on this pedestal, then they must have considered him a god, unquote. Fans of Ocarina of Time may remember that one of the gossip stones says the following to Link. They say that Gerudos worship Ganondorf almost like a god. The main character of the Village of Eight Graves, Tatsuya Tajimi, enters into the plot of the book as a result of Koume and Kotake's insistence on maintaining the Tajimi house under the rule of Yozo's true heir, despite there being many other candidates who are probably better suited and 
more worrisome, despite the high probability that Tatsuya will follow in his father's murderous footsteps. That's because a central theme to the Village of Eight Graves is family curses and hereditary madness. The curse began 400 years prior to the events of the book, when eight samurai were murdered by the villagers of that time. Side note, the number 400 stands out to me, because that is the age of twin Rova as stated in Ocarina of Time. But anyway, the villagers believed that the samurai were in possession of a vast trove of gold, and the villagers' greed consumed them. The leader of the Tajimi clan at that time, who is an ancestor of Yozo, led the assault which resulted in the deaths of the samurai. In the aftermath, the ancient Tajimi erected eight gravestones to pacify the spirits of the samurai because after the massacre, the lead samurai's severed head became animated and uttered a curse on the village and its people. As another aside, I do find it interesting that both the Tajimi village and the Gerudo settlements from the era of the wilds contain stone monuments honoring eight warriors from history. But while both were meant to honor significant figures from the past, the Gerudo did so out of love, while the Tajimi were acting out of fear. As a result of the curse of the murdered samurai, the ancestor of Yozo went mad and took his own life. This madness, seemingly a direct result of the curse and the shame of the Tajimi, persisted for generations to come, and it is squarely blamed for the evils of Yozo. His madness is portrayed as entirely hereditary, his violence without thought or volition. And when Yozo's heir Tatsuya arrives at the village and people start to die again, the villagers are convinced that Tatsuya is possessed by the curse, just like his father. And this brings me to my final connection, which is that I can't help but connect the curse of the Tajimi clan to that of the Curse of Demise from Skyward Sword. Much like Yozo's actions were predetermined by the sins of his ancestors, Ganondorf was destined to be evil by Demise's words after his defeat by the Hero of the Sky. Demise swears to Link that, quote, an incarnation of my hatred shall ever follow your kind, dooming them to wander a blood-soaked sea of darkness for all time, unquote. And it is suggested that every evil that Link must face in each subsequent game in the Zelda timeline is a result of this curse. In many ways, The Village of Eight Graves is an archetypal murder mystery novel, ticking all the genre-specific boxes, but it's the suggested elements of supernatural terror that capture your imagination. At the center of this witchcraft are the Tajimi matriarchs Koume and Kotake, solidifying them as cultural icons of the macabre. I hope you enjoyed this analysis and theory connecting Twin Rova to what is probably an obscure source to most Zelda fans. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Thank you.